candidate think need to be addressed regarding the right to bear arms? Furthermore, are you in support of reciprocity between states on concealed firearms by licensed individuals? I prefer to. Uh, big supporter of the Second Amendment, right to bear arms in South Dakota. I, you know, I have to ask a rhetorical, a rhetorical question. Is it a problem in South Dakota? I think that every law-abiding citizen that wants to own and have a firearm should be able to have one. I don't see it as a problem. We get some individual bills that come before the legislature every year that some, to me, just don't make sense. You know, to restrict a municipality from, to, to keep their, to restrict their ability to uh, restrict firearms on their property doesn't make sense to me. To keep it out of the parks during a 4th of July commission, to keep it out of city hall during a city commission. You know, I've got enough problems worrying what Senator Abel wants and whether the guy next to him is packing or not. Uh, you know, you got to vote every bill on its merits. Like I say, I support the Second Amendment. I support the right to bear arms. I think it goes a long way in South Dakota. I don't foresee it as a problem. I've owned guns since I believe I was 10 years old. I used to have guns in my trunk at school. We went hunting, hunting every night. I had a gun in my dorm room when I was in college. Things have changed. I didn't think about it much until I got to the legislature. And we get bills every year on guns. And the, the one we vote on every year is, it seems, it's guns in the trunk. It's property rights versus versus gun owners. I struggle with that one. I, I voted both ways on that particular issue. I guess at the end of the day, I don't know what's broken. Uh, we did pass a bill whereby you could carry a gun without any licensure and so on. The governor vetoed and I supported the veto. I deal with people who are mentally ill, who have a driver's license. I, I, I have some problems with them having a gun, being persuaded by someone else to create some crimes and not being culpable because they are not legally competent. I think that bill needs some work. And I thought that when I voted on it, the Senate was supposed to do it, they didn't, so the governor vetoed it. But I'm a strong supporter of guns. It's a, it's a part of South Dakota, part of Lawrence County, and I have several in my home, and I've, I've been hunting for years and support the Second Amendment. I think everybody here supports the Second Amendment. I don't think there's anybody here that's against the Second Amendment. I have an arsenal, but I don't just open it up to everybody. I wish I had the time to go hunting and fishing and do all these other things that I used to do. But, you know, there are limits to it. I don't know that everybody should have a cannon in their, in their backyard or a bazooka carried in their car. So, you know, you can put some limits on things and, and be reasonable. But the question had to do with reciprocity of, uh, between the states as to whether or not I can carry a concealed weapon in the state of Minnesota if I have a concealed weapon permit in South Dakota. I would support that. But again, that's a question for each of the state legislators. And if they don't want to have that, grant that, grant South Dakota that reciprocity to the citizen, that's their right, and you should respect it. Thank you. When I look at the Second Amendment, it reminds me of a lot of other things that uh, people are working every day to pull as many rights away from us citizens as they can. And I always look, like to look behind the scenes because I understand, and I won't make a speech about socialism tonight, but I was raised with it. Uh, I was in trouble with the first squirrel I shot from uh, an aunt and uncle that had a, some trees down the way, but uh, yeah, I've had guns all my life, packed them on a saddle. I, I, I had a trap line, did all that as a kid, and I'm a Vietnam vet. I know what a gun is for, trust me. But I, I rarely see where a citizen ends up being a problem with guns. And I just say that we can't be casual about this because they want our guns. We've got one of the biggest armies in the entire world in, uh, in about five states here. That's one reason that Chinese don't come after us, because we have guns. But it's another reason the world order people don't want our guns, because they want to reduce their deal. So I'm, I'm over my minute now. <laughs> you know, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the least the, the states that have the least restrictive gun ownership laws also have the lowest crime in this country. I think those two things are related. I, I I can see very few reasons why we need to restrict gun ownership. You know, it's brought up earlier why you don't want to have mentally ill people to have guns. Well, somebody's get gets to decide who is or isn't mentally ill. 
in that whole thing. And you know, that can change over time and then you get and you're assuming that somebody can't it really wants a gun's so not gonna find another way to get it, give me a break, you know. The only thing that, that permits do is restrict law abiding citizens from having guns, whether it be on a college campus. You know, I bet some of those folks that lost their children at Virginia Tech here a few years ago where they slaughtered 17 people wish to God that you know the instructor one of those people had been packing on campus to be able to return a little fire you know I I don't see where there's a big problem doing that on campus I don't know why somebody should be restricted from being able to, to have a gun in their desk drawer if they're a law-abiding citizen they got a concealed weapon permit as far as having reciprocity I'm all for it as long as it doesn't restrict our gun laws because we've restricted them now to be able to have reciprocity with somebody else 